Hi right, guys, before we proceed any further and I start producing additional content, I need to give you a brief introduction into occupational safety and health. <laughs> In other words, how not to endanger your own lives when dealing with electrical equipment. Okay? Right, so you have studied this before in school, all right? I'm pretty sure there has been uh, classes regarding this, but I'm going to introduce to you the practical aspects of electricity, safety and security. And I'm gonna start with the most scary thing of all, electrocution. So if you know how electricity works, the wall sockets have 240 volts, 50 hertz, and it supplies electrical current, all right? And the current comes up in two points. Let me show you. This is a 13 amp plug, wall plug, all right? It is normally connected via wire to your electrical device. You plug this in, turn it on, power goes to the device, and the device works. But the true nature of electricity is actually pretty straightforward. You see these two pins here, all right? This pin on the right is positive charge, this pin on the left is negative, and this pin on the top is earth or ground, okay? So this is how it works. Electricity flows from negative to positive. That means when you plug this into the wall, the current will go out of the wall into the device, make the device work, and flow back out into this point, okay? If you take one of these points, let's say the negative, and touch the, the electronic device, it's not going to work. Or you take the positive, not going to work. You need two wires to go in, it'll work, and the current will form a loop. All right? Now, how do you get electrocuted? We <laughs> become part of the loop. So, for example, this is the light stand I was talking about. This is the E27 fixture. I'm going to bring it up close so you can see it. Okay. And if you look carefully, it is connected to the 13 amp plug. All right. Now, inside the fixture here, you can see that. Uh, let me bring it down very close. Forgive me if you can't see it, but I'm going to try and use a pencil to show you how it works. If you see the center pin, that one there, all right? Uh, you know what? Maybe it'll be a good thing for me to get the bulb. Give me a moment. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if you see the center pin over there in that fixture, that center pin touches this center point, okay? Now, the outer casing, this metal piece around here, touches the metal piece around here. Notice these two points, the center point and the outer ring, they are not touching each other at all. If they touch each other, it's called a short circuit. This guy would burn, it won't work, okay? The same thing happens here. These two things are separated. If they touch together, you will have a short circuit, this guy will melt and your fuses will blow, okay? So, when you put this thing in there, electricity travels through one point, lights the bulb, and travels out. Common sense, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Got it? Right. So now, where is the danger? The danger is when you put this in, all right, and there happens to be a short circuit here. That means part of this lamp fixture touches one of those points all right now it's not going anywhere it's just staying there and that's fine remember i told you one of the wires is not enough you need two wires for current to flow so imagine if one of those wires is touching the casing and then you walk over and you touch the casing congratulations you have just completed the loop all right so this is how it works electricity travels in through your hand, down to the ground, you fry, you die. Got it? That is how electrocution occurs. So, 
to prevent yourself from getting electrocuted, you need to follow some very basic processes. And process number one, make sure you fix the proper plug. All right? And this is where it gets pretty darn scary because when you buy a plug on devices from China, they only come with two pins. See that? And these pins are positive and negative. That's it. Electricity travels to one, goes there, works its magic, comes back up. Awesome. So a lot of you are asking, what's the third one for? The third one, ladies and gentlemen, is an insurance policy. The third one is called the ground wire. Now, in our electrical wire, I don't have one here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hyperlapse this scene. I'll go get a wire. I'll come back. All right, I'm back. This is your 13 amp three core wire. This is the wire you can buy from the shop. And if you look very carefully in, I don't know whether you can see it though, but if you look inside here, you will see three separate wires. All right. One is brown, brown is live. One is blue, blue is negative. And the other one is a green yellow stripe. That is your ground wire. Now the reason there is three wires in here is because you are going to wire up the brown wire to this, okay, the blue wire to this, and the green wire to this. All right, now you're going to plug it into the wall and you're going to have a little sense of safety because if this device has a short circuit, the electricity will travel down the earth wire straight into God knows where. And when that happens, the fuse will blow and everything will turn off. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your safety measure. But in China, on the other hand, they don't have that safety measure. Their safety measure is different. They use a loading trip mechanism. All right? And the loading trip mechanism works like this. If there is a short circuit, the amps, if I'm not mistaken, will increase suddenly. And that sudden increase will cause the trip to switch off. Okay? Right. Not wrong. Not very good, but not wrong. Okay? In fact, the best mechanism are the strip boxes that can detect increase, sudden increase in amperage versus the ground looping. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, what the hell? I don't want to learn. I come study MESCOM. I didn't come and do engineering. Dude, this isn't engineering. This is called life. <laughs> you are going to have to do this if you move on your own and you live on your own. You're going to need to learn how to fix some basic fundamental things. Okay? And if you think you can't do it, I, I've had girlfriends who could dismantle all of this and put them back. Okay? Be a man, be an adult, learn about this. Now, I'm not here to ridicule you. I'm here to show you what to do and what not to do. Basic security measures. Ready? Here we go. When dealing with light fixtures like this, the most important rule is to make sure that the plug is unplugged when you put the bulb in. That's right, folks. The bulb must go in when this is not connected at all. Remember that rule, okay? So before you screw any bulb in, look at the ground and make sure that you see this dangling in the air. Okay? Now I know this is 100% not connected, so I can put my finger in there. I'm not gonna die. But if you don't do that and you accidentally touch this, you will die, dude. Die, eh? Electrocute, fryer, eh? burn. Eh? So be very cautious. When you are doing this, stop talking to your friends, stop staring at your girlfriend, stop playing with your phone. Focus because your life is dependent on this. Right. 
putting this in. Right? Again, finger tight. Do not overdo it. One, done. Right. The next thing you want to do, you want to make sure that the light switch is off. Now, if it's on or off, personally, I don't care. But just to be on the safe side, you want to turn it off. Then, and only then, do you plug the switch into the socket. Use an extension cord, plug it in, and do not turn it on yet. That's the mistake everyone makes. They plug it in and turn it on and, oh, I'll move the light around, I'll carry the lamp around. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Remember, electricity likes to travel away. If I touch this, the current will travel through me, go to the ground. But it also travels in another fashion. If you look at this light stand, the light stand is made of metal, a conductor of electricity. All right, so if you turn it on accidentally and if there's a short circuit, okay, and the fuse didn't blow, you're fine. But sometimes your house could have an old trip box. It could have an old wiring system and it won't blow as well. And if you get electrocuted, you will have a problem, okay? So, put the light where you want it to be, aim it where you think you want it to be, plug it in, Aim the light away from you. Do not do this. Do not put the bulb and then you, ah, oh, oh, unstare the bulb. No, 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 bad habit. Bulbs, well, olden day bulbs can explode. Even CFLs, compact fluorescent bulbs can explode. LED, not so much. But still, the moment you turn it on, this guy is going to shoot 4,000 lumens of light right into your face. Duh. Don't do that. Turn it away. Stand behind the bulb, plug it in, and then flick the switch. Okay? Now, don't flick the switch and start fondling the bulb. Why? Why put yourself at risk? Turn it on and walk away. Got it? Got it. Now, here's another measure that what grips. By the way, grips are the people on the film set that move all of these things around. What they also like to do is to wear rubber shoes. Remember conductor of electricity? Right. So when they wear rubber shoes, the electricity finds it hard to travel to the ground. That's step one. They also like to wear leather or rubber gloves. Double the protection. Okay? Now, I know you guys are not going to do that. A lot of people don't do if they are shooting at home and all that. They're probably wearing slippers and not wearing any gloves, which is fine. You just need to be extra, extra careful how and when you turn it on okay all right now here comes another really funky part what if you buy a bulb or a fixture that has only two wires this one has three wires so it was easy to wire it up but this guy has only two wires i can take one of these and put it on the plus which is the brown wire and i can take this one and put it on the blue wire which is the minus where the hell's the yellow wire dude you need to do some modification. Everything that you buy in terms of lighting, fixture, kettle, stove, all right, has a body, a casing, okay? In this case, the casing is made of plastic. Can you see this plastic thing here? Right. Now, many people um, will tell me, oh, it's made of plastic, guys, uh, cheaper. No, it's made of plastic for a reason to save your life all right if this were made from metal oh my goodness death trap okay so a lot of lighting fixtures are made of plastic or they are made of something called bakelite bakelite is a very old uh, polymer or a material and they don't make them anymore all right instead a lot of materials today are made from plastic polycarbonates or polyvinyl chloride pvc okay plastic does not conduct electricity but you never know dude you never know you i look at this and i don't even know whether it's a hundred percent plastic it could be semi-plastic all right so if i have a device that has only two core and i want to ground this device i would take this wire cut off one end take the green part of the wire and tie it to this stand 
all right i will tie it to this stand here and make sure that the green wire is fixed to the stand now if i can't fix it to the stand it's all right i'll find something here that has metal and i will fix the green wire to it green wire huh? don't put the red sorry the blue or the brown wire green okay listen carefully the green wire is your emergency exit okay then the other end of the green wire i will screw to the top pin see that top pin there that is your earth all right so now i have brown wire going in i have blue wire going in and i have the green wire also going in congratulations you have just added a safety circuit to the bulb it's called the ground loop cool all right so that ladies and gentlemen in a nutshell explains basic fundamental wiring if you are not comfortable doing this show this video to the shop tell them i want to put a ground wire let the shop guy do it for you all right if you don't want to do that and you want to use just the two pin you can as well you just need to stop playing with the light put the light on turn it off move it around once you're happy that's the position don't hug it eh? just use your little finger pink and just boop. that's it stop playing with it leave it let it do its job if you want to move it no problem try to move the lamp when the power is off don't be lazy bend down turn off the power move the light turn on the power get it okay all right so that is the simplest explanation that i can it is your responsibility to watch your own safety i cannot be there to watch your safety for you your parents cannot be there your friends cannot be there you are in charge of your own life and get used to it ladies and gentlemen because from now on to the end of your future that's all you have that's your life all right last point i know that a lot of you right now are saying well like that i want to use battery ray yeah but <laughs> battery lights will never i repeat never ever have enough power to match electricity that's the way the cookie crumbles baby all right now if you're just shooting tabletop scenes and you're just playing with things on the table yeah use a battery light that's fine but trust me if you're going if you're going into production if you're going to do location scenes and lighting up a big set you have no choice but to learn how to use electrical devices so practice health and safety standards practice security stop playing the fool on the set make sure you don't use it in the rain water conducts electricity make sure your hands are dry if you really can afford it go buy a pair of leather gloves and use it wear rubber shoes see rubber sandals i'm not only wearing them because i want to be comfortable dude everything in my life has dual function okay does not conduct electricity all right okay so this is truly the last video that i'm gonna do until next year so take care take care of yourself hopefully all of these things will come in very handy for you and your production value will increase okay next year is a new year it's a new start it's a new dawn isn't that a game from far cry yeah let's start something new you need help you want to do stuff give me a call give me a whatsapp message and let's make things happen all right. Thank you, guys. Have a great Christmas and a great New Year. See ya.